Furry dating sims? Well, that's a little bit controversial. You know what's not as controversial? Weirdly enough, dating monsters, because that's a thing. So long as the human race exists, there will always be new kinks. I got this game when this game first came out, and I wasn't able to actually convince anyone to go to the dance with me. You can play this with multiple people? Well, I've never experienced that, because I'm always alone. Oh my god, I'm in love. Can I date myself? She's literally flaming. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was, genocidal. But she cute though. Damien LaVey, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Well, if I was going after him, I'm pretty sure I'd already have a leg up, but I'm not. Polly Geist, 22, question mark. Did she die at 22? Oh god, she died at 22. That's a little messed up. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. I think I kind of want to go after her. You know, you you could say I I I want her to be my boo. <laughs> and Vera Oberlin, 23, a mean, self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. I can see why people would go after Vera. One look and you're a uh, rock hard. This is gonna be the whole video, prepare yourselves. It was clear it had to be one of them. But who? Polly, I already said that. Game, are, were you not paying attention? Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz game ever. All minds are run, but they are run in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Yes, I had to really tap into my bullshit lessons when having to write multiple essays on topics I didn't care about. It's just like real high school. So all these questions are going to determine my character's stats. And since I want to go after Polly, I want to uh, act like I am a party animal. Even though I've never actually gone to anything more than a birthday party. You build a 100 foot statue commemorating an event so that in a thousand years, archeologists can learn something about the people of our time. What does the statue represent? That glorious instant when your friend stops you from texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. Your least favorite political figure being devoured by rabid rhinoceri, which are also covered in badass tattoos. That mind blowing twist in your favorite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever unlike all that boring stuff they show on the news. I'm going to guess I should choose that I was super hella drunk, even though I'm allergic to alcohol. If you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? Well, apparently it'd be a neon green wolf. <laughs> it's according to the last video I made. A purebred horse, at least I can keep his semen and sell it. It's worth a lot. Who said there was no silver lining in bestiality? There's no joke, I'm just uncomfortable. No one can make me befriend an animal. If I befriended an animal, it'd be of my own free will. As a matter of fact, I already have befriended an animal, so the joke's on you, pal. I'm torn between this one and this one, but I feel so outrageously uncomfortable with this one, I'm gonna choose this one just for my own sanity. What criteria would you use to name your children? I'm going to guess someone who likes to Parte doesn't really want to think much about baby names because that 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 means possibly responsibility down the line. So meh, no name. It's just too much work. So I have smarts. I probably don't need that. Boldness. I don't know if I need that or not. Creativity. I probably need that. Charm. Is that just a universal trait? Do I just need charm all the time? Fun. Nine. I think I need a lot of that. And money. Is money a character trait? I guess if you're shallow enough, it is. Auditorium. Let's just go down the list, I guess. You gain plus two creativity. Okay, I probably don't need auditorium. So every day is just, oh, I guess every week, is just you choose a stat to increase. Lady, you're minding your own business when you see Polly floating down the hallway texting just as you're about to approach her. Well, shucks, how convenient. There you are, Polly, I've been following this ascent, the scent of betrayal. What are you talking about, buddy? I haven't been pulling any pranks at all lately. Some very unfunny person messed with my sports gear. They put my left sock in my right shoe and my right sock in my left shoe. Dang, don't you hate it when that happens? Polly, I know we're best bros and you would never do a prank to me, but I think you did this prank to me. I smelled you. Mm, no, you didn't because ghosts don't have a scent. I mean, it makes sense that Polly would want to do a lot of pranks. I mean, she can get away with them. You can't pin anything to her.
Maybe not to a normal person, but a werewolf can smell anything. And ghosts smell like algebra and global warming. Right. Well, if ghosts don't smell, then what am I smelling? So I have two options. Of course ghosts smell, like ecstasy spiked rose wine and Victoria's seance lingerie. I'm going to guess the the reference to spiking someone's drink, which you should never do, and is very illegal, and you are a scumbag if you do, is probably the choice I want to go with. Yes. Big brain up here, big brain. Then it was you. Scott, do you have any idea how many ghosts in this school wear Victoria's seance? It's the ultimate lingerie boutique. I thought I was the only one that was gonna be doing puns. It's a match made in heaven. So you're saying it could have been any ghost? Pretty much. But you know what? I'd be happy to use my rose wine smelling lingerie scented skill set to help you crack the case. Thanks, Polly. You're a good friend. The narrator has a has a little face. Is there just some dude off to the corner in the side just narrating everything that's happening? As they walk away arm in arm, Polly looks over her shoulder and mouths to you, it was totally me. But Scott seems content, their friendship is saved, and Polly seems pretty flattered by your choice descriptors. In the end, the strongest smell here is the sweet smell of success. You gain two smarts and plus one charm. Gosh, I think I should talk to Polly. You know, the food in this cafeteria is really atrocious. It's hardly even worthy of my Instagram. You know, every time I played this game, I never understood the appeal of Liam. He always seemed like a major pain in my neck. <laughs> I don't even eat food. See, this is exactly what I mean. We can do so much better than these subpar culinary abortions. Oh, I see what you mean. You mean the two of us should have a cook-off. What? No. Did you say something? I'm not listening because I'm so psyched about the cook-off. At no point did I agree to- I've got a huge advantage though because I've cooked so many drugs. Oh, you think you've got an advantage, huh? I've been alive for centuries of culinary history. It's on. The two of them dash into the kitchen, ignoring all- That's the voice I'm gonna use for the narrator, by the way. Like a old-timey radio voice, because it just feels appropriate. The two of them dash into the kitchen, ignoring all rules of law school and common decency as they commence cooking. Two celebrity chef judges appear to critique the challengers. Because the school just has two celebrity chef judges at hand, what school doesn't? <laughs> I think they're both equally horrible, says the cruel British judge. I think they're both equally marvelous, says the overly nice British judge. Both judges turn to you. What do you think, tiebreaker judge? Whose meal is truly the cat's pajamas? Wow, it's like it's giving me a free, a free bonus to woo, wooing Polly. That pile of yarn you're knitting in the frying pan. That's clearly a set of pajamas for a cat. So it was literally the cat's pajamas. Oh, it was supposed to be food? Sorry, I forgot what we were doing. That's the drugs. I'll do that to you. Take enough of them. Later you run into Polly again and she lets you pet her kitty. If you know what we mean. Oh goodness. She stole someone's cat? What is this? Welcome to my little shop. Buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats. Shit that will lead you into stupid new adventures. Even some shit that might be needed at some very specific moments. So take a look. Even though it's a game about monster girls, I still can't escape the furry fandom. There's still cat girls in my monster game. The furries are everywhere. A motivational poster of Bob Ross. I mean, of some unnamed artist that does not bear any resemblance to any real life person. And if it does, it is purely coincidental. You have to be an idiot to mistake this for a ghost costume, but most of your classmates are idiots. See you later. I mean, seriously, I'm gonna say it again. Can I just date myself? Hot damn, literally hot. Hey, 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 hey. What? Are you going to the party tonight at Dale the Mummy's Crypt? You know, I bet Polly likes Vera because she likes to get stoned. <laughs> that day during recess, hang on, your high school had recess? Start to rave for half an hour that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. You spot Miranda and Scott in the vicinity. Damn it, how, why is Polly not here? There's a literal rave happening. It seems like the perfect opportunity to test your new blanket. You wear it as if you were a goofy ghost and approach them with a spooky boo while Miranda is explaining something to Scott. And that's why those treacherous air people are the absolute worst, and also most likely tied to the disappearance of, Mar of Mars Argo. <gasps> 
Oh, what's this? A ghost? Perhaps a foreign exchange student? What are you talking about? <gasps> oh, gasp! I didn't see you there. So ghostly. You guys are joking, right? This is clearly just Red wearing a blanket with eye holes cut in it. Jealousy is a powerful drug, Liam. Do not become addicted. Yeah, Liam, you don't see anyone saying, Oh, Liam is really just Red wearing a blanket with eye holes cut in it. Exactly, Liam. Even despite the many times we've suspected it was so. Tell us, do you have any cool ghost powers? Ultimate ghost prank haunt someone into despair? It doesn't feel right, but then again, these are monsters, so that's probably going to be funny to them. You spot a victim for your prank, the coven. You start running in their direction while screaming your best boo to date. What's this? Maybe it's a minion of Queen Helenia. Rumors say she's preparing to be the big bad of next season. Stop booing at us. It's hard enough to save the world on a daily basis. We don't need people here undermining our morale. Stop booing. They go running, looking for a place to recover from all the booing and undermining. What's sad is that I knew people in high school who were like that. The events that just took place are actually very reflective of my own personality and what I would actually do. The ghost clearly haunted them, and they have fought against all kinds of evil creatures. Such a powerful ghost. So cool. She just ran at them while booing. I could literally do that. Ghost, we respect your ghost powers, and we wish you the best on your ghost adventures. Oh, shucks, I did not mean to go to you again. I have no money, crap. Too poor for everything, what's this? Oh, all cool kids want to be friends with Satan. Man, if that isn't the truth, especially nowadays. If you didn't know any better, you would say that it seems like Vera and Polly are almost more interested in their phones than they are in you. Impossible. Have you seen me? It's nothing personal, Red. It's just that Polly and I are very engrossed in texting our financial slave. Yay. Yeah, it's pretty hard to compete with some guy whose fetish is buying you anything you want. That's my fetish too. If only I was hot enough to just have a bunch of people buy me anything I wanted. But instead I'm making YouTube videos. Good thing he's rich enough to take care of both of us. You know what they say, true friendship is sharing secrets and financial slaves. Still, I do worry that this arrangement might not be sustainable. What happens if he runs out of money? Our cash flow instantly stops. Besides, being handed everything you want on a platter, in this case, and uh, the platter being an online money transferring platform, is almost boring. Vera, I'd rather boring than having to work my ass off all the time, trying to think of new jokes in order to entertain an audience for a platform that doesn't actually pay me as much as I need it to. If anyone is willing to be either my sugar daddy or sugar mama, my DMs are open. Yeah, I get that. It's a little less boring when you're on as much acid as I am right now, but I see what you mean. If we could somehow turn this into a business venture, then maybe it would get interesting. And we could continue to profit, even after he's gone broke from catering to our every whim. I mean, how interesting do you think business actually is? Since he's so obsessed with us, we should just tell him to do something totally insane and see if he does it. And I think money is fine and all, but my favorite currency is chaos. The choices are, you can easily grow this arrangement into a business. Just escalate and delegate. Have the financial slave go and acquire his own financial slave to give him money. And have that financial slave go and find a financial slave. Or tell him to marry a llama. Llamas are pretty cute though. I'm gonna choose the llama. Oh my God, yes, it is everything to me. Yeah, I don't think this is my scene. I'm going to go check on my illegal law firm. Catch you weirdos later. I'm texting the financial slave right now, telling him to marry a llama. <gasps> oh, he's already typing, let's see. Red, you will never believe this. It turns out the financial slave has actually been talking to a llama for a few months now through a llama monster dating site. He says he's a commitment phobe and he never really defined the terms of his relationship with the llama and he keeps introducing the llama as a friend, but he knows now it's because he just just scared of being hurt. He's taking this as a sure sign that it's time to be brave and commit to the llama. And they're headed to City Hall for a ceremony right now. I'm going to assume that if your financial slave is a monster, then this is totally normal and fine. However, I keep imagining some human and now I just, just, ew. Okay, we have one day left before the prom. Huh, I think I should probably work on my boldness. So I'm going to the bathroom, where only the most bold things happen. More ghost shenanigans? Don't mind if I do. Oh, we're actually going to be ghosting Polly? 
Wait, another ghost? No, I can't believe this! Man, this disguise is just so convincing. Finally, someone else notices. This is clearly just red. I can't believe it because it's just so co too cool to be true. Come on. It's not cool nor true. Shh, Liam, I can't hear our cool new ghost friend over all your jealousy. So tell me, how did you die? We have to share so much ghost gossip. Good question. Time to improve a lie with another bigger lie. I only tell how I died on the third date, boo? Ghost wink? Or I was offered as a sacrifice to the god of party. I'm going to guess she probably knows the god of party because she is a ghost and can probably transcend metaphysical dimensions. So, third date? Not so charming. No! Oh god, I lost two fun and a charm? No. Will I even have enough? Today's the day for Monster Prom! Crap! Uh, do it. I can take myself? I can date myself! Let's try going for Polly, because that's what I decided on at the beginning of this video. Hey, look at you, it's my favorite ghost other than myself. Prom? Sure! We can go and do lots of things. Dancing, getting drunk, doing it. Party time! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, that's what she meant. She still thinks I'm a ghost. And she's looking cute as hell. I did it for the first time after so many years. I finally managed to get someone to go to the prom with me in Monster Prom. Well, everyone, I want you to go into the comments and tell me who do you think the hottest ghost is? You can't choose Polly. She is now mine. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more videos like this, leave a comment in the, in the, the, the not the description, only I can do that. Leave a comment down below to tell me that I should do more because these are fun and I like doing them and I've been doing a bunch of them recently because God, I'm bored. Yeah.